Hey, thanks for joining us today for another Bible study. We're going to go through a quick one today uh, with the heresy of the pre-trib rapture. The pre-trib rapture is a lie from the pit of hell. It's only a couple hundred years old. Nobody ever taught it or preached it before a couple hundred years ago. Um, and we're going to debunk that lie from the pit of hell. Very easily, I can tell you right now that not one, ra uh, one scripture in here uh, would preach far, positively far, a pre-trib rapture. Not one scripture. Not one scripture in the entire Bible that talks about a pre-trib rapture. Uh, we're going to be reading from scripture from the KJV, just so you know. Um, and so I pray you stick with us. This is going to be probably less than a half an hour. Uh, there are various teachings, of course, on the rapture. But what it basically teaches is that Christians will somehow be magically sucked up before any trouble or tribulation comes in, before the great tribulation comes. The term rapture does not appear in the Bible and has never been taught until a couple hundred years ago, as I said. So pay attention. Um, as we go through the scripture, amen, we're going to rebuke this quickly. Matthew 24, 3 through 4 says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, Lord, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. If I'm looking at you right now and you believe in the pre-trib rapture, you have been deceived. I was deceived for the first six years that I thought I was right. I was deceived by false imputed righteousness. I thought Jesus was hovering over my head and Jesus couldn't see my, and God couldn't see my sins. What heresy. Uh, I believed in unconditional eternal security. Or once saved, always saved. The perseverance of the saints. Wicked, wicked, wicked. God's love is conditional. Our security is conditional on obeying, having faith in Jesus. For we are saved by faith, which means being faithful. The minute you stop being faithful, you fall away as a castaway. But let's stay on the uh, preacher of rapture. Let no man deceive you, Matthew 24, 4 says, amen. Jesus warns us this. Pay very close attention to what he says right after that. Right after he says, let no man deceive you, he tells you what's going to happen to you if you truly walk as a Christian. Matthew 24, 9 says, Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated by all nations, Christian, for my name's sake. Are you hated by all nations? Bible says in Luke 12, 51 to 53, and Matthew 10, 34 to 36, that the enemies you will have will be in your own, in your own household after you become a Christian. A mother will be against a daughter, daughter against the mother, father against son, son against the mother, etc., etc., etc. The enemies will be in your own household. And Jesus clearly says that I did not come to bring peace. The Prince of Peace did not come to bring peace, but the vision. Look those verses up. Luke 12, 51 to 53 and Matthew 12, 34 to 36. Look them up. Jesus did not come to bring peace, people. You got to go through tribulation. Jesus is telling his own disciples that they're going to be delivered to tribulation and they will be hated by all for his name's sake. Listen, Matthew 24, 10 through 13, and then many shall be offended. When you are a true Christian, you are a Bible-believing, born-again uh, Christian, you will be hated and this happens to you. They shall be, a people will be offended. Oh, that self-righteous guy, oh, he's in a cult. He's a Jesus freak, blah, blah, blah. If you're not hearing this, He's taking it too far. He believes in an old book. Taking it. If you don't have this stuff being said to you, something's wrong with your walk, as you like to call it. And there shall be many offended and shall betray one another, and they shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall arise and spew these false doctrines of pre trib and once saved, always saved, and imputed righteousness, and etc., and deceive many. And Matthew 24, 12, and 13 says, Because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold, but he that endures till the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. You must endure till the end. Jesus doesn't mention anything here about some rapture taking them away, but that they would have to endure till the very end to be saved. Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22, we're going to do first. For then shall be great uh, tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No nor even shall ever be. Wow. So the tribulation, this is the worst. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Jump down now to Matthew 24, 29, 30, and 31. It says in verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon not give her light. 
and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. He's coming back in flaming fire. Amen. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory. Listen. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Wait a minute. After the tribulation, the trumpet sounds, and then the elect is gathered. You got to see this. Come on. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. This is the parable of the weeds, okay? Matthew 24, uh, 13, 24 to 30. Another parable put he forth, saying unto them, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sows a good seed in his field. But while the men slept, his enemy came in and sowed tires among the wheat, and he went away. But when the blade sprang up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tires also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did thou not sow good seed in thy field? Where did these tars come from? And he said unto them, an enemy has done this. Just like the people are sowing these false seeds in your mind. The servants of uh, the servants said unto him, will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, nay, lest we gather up the tars, you root up also the wheat with them. Leave them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And then in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tars and bind them in bundles and burn them, and then gather the wheat into the barns. Again, the consistent message is that the bad will be removed first and the good will remain until the end. It's very clear teaching. Let's continue. Uh, this is going to explain the parable of the weeds, Matthew 13, 36 to 43. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare us unto the parable the tires of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom, but the tires are the children of the wicked one, the sinners. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tires are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. So the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and which do iniquity, and shall cast them in a fiery furnace, where they will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then, then shall the righteous shine forth as the son in the kingdom of their father, who has ears, let them hear. Do you see the order? Again, the sinners and the lawless will be gathered out first, chucked into the fire, the lake of fire would burn for fire and brimstone. The second death, which never ends, constant eternal punishment, then the righteous will remain to shine forth in his kingdom. Hallelujah. This is contrary to just his 200-year-old teaching that you might believe. We're going to get into who actually started to uh, tell that lie. Matthew, where it originated from. Matthew 13, 47 to 51. Another parable. The parable of the net. This is what Jesus says. Listen, Matthew 30, uh, 13, excuse me, 47 to 51. Only 28 chapters of Matthew can't be 31, right? Matthew 13, 47 and 51. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered out of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of this world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Very clear. Jesus said unto them, do you understand? They said unto him, yes, Lord. Now the question is, do you understand that there's no such thing as a preacher of rapture? Don't believe the lie. Schofield and Darby, I'm going to get into that. So it's not the Christian who was snatched away first, we have been told. But the wicked who will be snatched away and thrown into the fire. Again, the believer has to endure till the end to be saved. Listen. Luke 17, 26 to 27, very powerful verses. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and they drank and they married wives and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Noah wasn't sucked up. The flood didn't take away all the, um, uh, didn't uh, take away the righteous, right? The opposite of the modern day rapture teaching. It took away the wicked 
first. Luke 17, 20, and Noah and the, the other seven, his family, they lived. The eight lived. The wicked were take, taken away. Again, against the rapture that you believe, some of you. Luke 17, 28 to 30. Let's bring this home now. We're almost done. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot. Another example. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built it. But in the same day that Lot went out to Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Lot was still on the earth. He didn't get sucked up. The wicked was taken out first. Jesus made it very clear again, perfectly clear, the, the first to go of the wicked. Lot remained, but the rest were taken away and destroyed. Let's go to Luke 17, 33 to 36. And you know, I'm going to stay, say here, so many people want to save their life. They don't want to have contention with their mother, their father, their sister, their brother, their children, whatever it is. When the Bible's clear that Jesus didn't come to bring peace, but he came to bring division. Amen. As I said before, the enemies will be of your own household. People don't want to offend anybody. Listen, the Bible is a double-edged sword. When you become a Christian, you become a freak to everybody else. Now, you don't be a hateful, revengeful, angry person. But you're always talking about Jesus when he uh, has the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. You don't want to go to those movies or those watch those stupid sitcoms that have all these sexual innuendos of a woman in tight clothes and the breasts hanging out, all this other stuff. You don't want to go to the sporting games where they have cheerleaders flipping upside down. You can see all their private pro and all this other stupid, nasty music of people drinking and yelling and screaming. And men running around, running around in tights with a pigskin ball with lines in them. That's what you spend your time with? Not the beautiful holy word of God and getting out there preaching or working harder to support a missionary overseas? And you think you're going to waltz into heaven? The Bible says you must pick up your own cross. We're going to get into that. Jesus did his work on the cross. That is finished. Are you going to finish? That's the question. He picked up his cross. Are you going to pick up yours? Don't believe these lies. So many will just do not want to suffer in this world. Being a Christian is about suffering and sacrifice. We're going to get into it. Luke 17, 33 to 36 says, Whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Are you ready to lose your life? This doesn't mean necessarily physically. This means your family, your friends, everybody else, etc. I'm not talking about if you're a husband that has a wife, you leave her and you leave your kids, okay? But there will be division in your own household, certainly. Luke 17, 34 to 36, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one, uh, excuse me, there shall be two men in one bed, there shall be one taken, the other one shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, there shall be one taken, the other left. Two men shall be in the field, there shall be, uh, one shall be taken and the other left. It's commonly taught concerning these scriptures that the one taken in each of these cases was raptured out. Where do you get that? When we see all the other examples going back, the parables of Jesus spoke. It's always been the, the, the sinner taken first. Amen? And destroyed. The man taken from bed, the woman taken from grinding, the man taken from the field were all taken away by the reapers that came at the end of the age and they suffer the same fate as the flood victims and the fire and, brim, victim, fire and brimstone victims of Sodom and Gomorrah. They're given to us for examples. The same in these verses. It's also commonly taught that we as Christians are not going to suffer any tribulation or trouble. This is great heresy. And that Jesus did all the suffering for us on the cross. Where do people get this? But this is what the Bible says. Matthew 10, 37 to 39. We're almost done. Hallelujah. This was quick, right? It's a quick rebuke. Matthew 10, 37 to 39 says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So you have to take up your cross. Jesus did the work, but you have to do your work. Otherwise, he that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my, lose his life for my sake shall save it. Now, losing your life means Denying all your fleshly lust, denying all sin. Sin stops at conversion at repentance. Amen. And once you do that, you're going to fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to want to read more and more of his Bible. All of a sudden, all that time you used to be spending with your buddies and everything else, that goes all the way. And they're going to look at you like you are a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. 
James 4, 4, if you're friend with, friends with the world, you're an enemy of God. Jesus also said in Matthew 7, 13 to 14, listen very closely to this, okay? Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many go in that way. Many go in that way. Verse 14 of Matthew 7 says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life and few people find it. Now I want you to listen to what the Greek says in this. The Greek meaning of narrow and small, a tribulation, suffering, pain, difficulty, hardship, etc. That's for Jesus. Are you suffering and having difficulty and pain for Jesus? Hardship, tribulation for Jesus because of Jesus. Did this truth create those? Not that you're just a jerk. You can't be a jerk and be with Christ, right? Did you becoming a Christian create tribute? Yes, it has to. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. All the non-Christians, amen? And the people that will hate you the most are the ones sitting in the main street churches, even the back road churches. The Baptists, the Catholics, the Seventh-day Adventists, the, uh, the, the uh, oh, all of them. I have a whole list of them over here. I don't know if you can see them, but that's, well, actually just a partial list. But Presbyterians, Reformers, United Methodists, Lutherans, Pentecostals, Anglican, Word of Faith. Well, we can go through those all day long, but uh, there are thousands of denominations, I believe, thousands of sects around the world um, that are just blasphemous. So let's not get into that too much. But uh, the professing Christian will hate you the most because you will tell them that they have to come out of that false teaching. Amen. We are told that the false doctrine of rapture says that you will be taken. I mean, you are told that the false doctrine of rapture says you'll be taken away from tribulation. Again, not one verse in this Bible says that you will be raptured out. You will suffer pain. You will suffer sorrow. You will suffer for Jesus Christ's namesake on that narrow road or you're not with him. You'll be rejected. You'll be hated. There'll be difficulty and you have to endure to the end to be saved. Lean on Jesus. It's your cross you must bear. Don't make any mistake about it. You must endure to the end and then you'll be saved. Finally. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6. Now listen, this is called the coming day of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6. But the times and the seasons, brethren, you have I have no need, you have no need that I run unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You have to be ready. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief. You are children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Let us therefore not sleep as others do, but let us be watchful and sober. You need to continually watch. You need to stand fast. Not just stand on the word, but stand fast. Stand against evil. Amen? Your lamps better be full. Don't have half full lamps. You know, you can't just be a Sunday morning Christian or a Sunday morning, Wednesday night and Friday morning, whatever you do. Uh, you know, you pray a meeting on Friday morning or this on Wednesday night, this small group, this and that. Look, if you're not living holy and just for God, you're doing the wicked things of the world. You will seek, I mean, you will end in destruction. Destruction comes upon those who are saying and believing peace and safety, peace and safety. No tribulation in your life. Nobody hates you for Jesus Christ's namesake. You're not separated from anybody. You are sorely mistaken if you think you're a Christian. The only ones that are going to enter that narrow gate will have difficulty, tribulation, and persecution. It's the only way to be saved. The modern rapture doctrine is another false and peace safety message similar to the once saved, always saved. Oh, you can fall away from salvation, just go into sin, unrepentant, willful sin. I hear people say, oh, I sin daily and thought, word indeed, you're going to go straight to hell. The Bible says you need to be perfect. We'll have a teaching down below. People believe in imputed righteousness. Gee, oh, God doesn't see my sins. I said the sinner's prayer. False. And they just see Jesus when I sin. He's got me imputed with his righteousness. What a wicked, wicked doctor. Romans 3.25 says, and for sins that are past, he became a propitiation for past sins. Never future or present. That's ridiculous. We will want to be sober and be an alert. Okay, well, I just want to tell you where this stupid pre-trib rapture came from. Not the Bible, obviously. Where did it come from? Believe it or not, it started with a woman named Margaret MacDonald. She had given prophecy concerning the end times in 1830. Her 
prophecy was written down and later published in 1840 and again in 1861. From this prophecy, a wicked man named John Nelson Darby began to promote this concept of the rapture theory and began to and it began to become very popular. Another wicked man, C.I. Schofield, the well-known theologians in the late 1800s and early 1900s, loved the rapture theory and began to include it in his annotated Bibles, and from there it became widely popular in most American churches and now ultimately around the world. So this is a new and modern doctrine that was never taught before 1830, period. It is thought, uh, it is taught and believed by most Christians. It's really sad. They have movies about it and everything. It's wicked. It's just another way of Satan tickling people's ears. Oh, yeah, we have to go through tribulation. Jesus got my back. Yeah, you know, I'm stuck in the sin. I watch a little porn. But I was a porno freak before, but now I just watch it once in a month. Or, yeah, Jesus got my back. I'll just repent. Or I'm going to go out on my birthday every year and, you know, get drunk like I usually do. I used to drink every day, but now I just do it once a year to celebrate. Or I'm going to do it on my graduation or whatever. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Willfully sinning. Read Hebrews 10, 26. You must live holy for the Lord. And see, it leads to all these false teachings. Amen? So this is just another one of those false teachings that allow people to live in sin and become a saved sinner. It's just escapism mentality, no tribulation, no offending anybody, no separation, lovers of the world. Everybody loves you. You're just that happy-go-lucky Christian that doesn't offend. Well, let me tell you, Jesus was the most offensive person to walk on this earth, and he got murdered he got killed for it amen for you now don't trample his blood by saying you're going to leave this world you're not going to go through tribulation don't trample his blood by saying you're going to be once saved always saved and he did everything for you on that cross oh he did a lot he finished his work on that cross but you have to finish your work and endure till the end amen so i don't want to go on anymore i can give you some more uh verses here i'll post them uh, in our teaching, which this will be linked to, okay? So underneath the video, you can just go to the link and see the rest of it. But I just pray uh, that you got something out of this and you don't believe in this heresy anymore. Uh, we'll also post uh, the other teachings that I mentioned, the, the, the heresy of once saved, always saved, or as the wicked Calvinists say, the perseverance of the saints uh, and the Baptists, you know, um, all false teachings. So come out from among them, come out from those denominations don't believe these lies. I care for your soul. And more importantly, Jesus is calling you to the truth. Don't listen to these false pastors that have you. I was in that for six years. I moved many times and I went to multiple churches and they were all the same. The same ear tickling McSermon they download from the internet. 22 minute McSermon. Of course, that's after the lights, camera and action of everybody playing the music and everybody's dancing around. There's no true worship there. They're not worshiping from their heart. Amen. This is all false. So I pray that you come out of that deception. I'll put the links down below also on imputed righteousness. And if, uh, first of all, I want to say God bless the obedient. If you don't believe in these heresies that I had mentioned, God bless you. I hope um, you continue to walk holy and endure till the end. Remember, don't look back like Lot's wife. Turn into a pillar of salt. Keep your hands to the plow. Keep looking forward. Amen. Keep, keep going out and preaching. Keep uh, supporting those that do. Uh, do you want pure and undefiled religionism, James 1, 27, et cetera, et cetera. We must do for the kingdom. One of the biggest uh, sins of omission that I see people uh, will go to how far is not giving to the orphan and the widow, not giving to the poor. Amen. They'll give a tithe, which is not even commanded. That was Old Testament, and that was tithing of food, never money. I don't see where these people understand these, these, these teachers these days, these false teachers in the in the pulpits. But the reason why these people are sitting in these is because it's false. It's false teaching and uh, they will go straight to hell. So I appreciate you and I hope you enjoyed this teaching. And the ones that aren't living holy, there's going to be a link down below called the way to the cross. Please click that and learn how to get to the cross of Christ.